Hello everyone, welcome to lecture 22 of the online course on nanophotonics, plasmonics and metamaterials. Today's lecture will be on fundamentals of metamaterials. We have already covered some basics of metamaterials and given you an overview of uh, why metamaterials are needed. So, today we will actually go into a bit more details of it and see how do we actually create materials with customizable properties which are dependent on the physical structure rather than the uh, chemical composition of the materials that are being used for creating metamaterials. So, here is the lecture outline as you can see first we will show you the engineered materials classification then we will talk about metamaterials we will also discuss why we need metamaterials and then we will show you couple of designs of different types of metamaterials which has got artificial permittivity, artificial permeability and artificial plasma frequency. So, when we look into uh, engineered materials, so engineered materials are basically those materials which are purposefully tailored to exhibit some useful and enabling electromagnetic properties. So, you can see that engineered materials can be put into four buckets. The first one is ordinary materials. So, these are basically the pure materials which are found in nature or they are synthesized in lab. So, based on the atomic uh, scale phenomena, the properties are defined, right. So, you can classify them as uh, conductors, dielectrics, magnetics, absorbers, nonlinear, anisotropic, uh, biisotropic, or you know, chiral. Then you have another type of uh, engineered materials which is basically a mixture. So, the name tells you that this is basically you know the ordinary materials are now combined to get some average property. So, they can give you different type of dielectrics, magnet, uh, magnetics, magnetodielectrics and absorbers. And then we have also seen that photonic crystals. So, these are basically uh, engineered structures which are periodic in nature. So, you are talking about periodic structures where the electromagnetic waves uh, behave in a manner, the electrons behave in a electronic crystal. So, that is why it is called photonic crystal. So, we have to understand that here the change in the permittivity in the photonic crystal is of the order of the wavelength of light. Okay? So, when you go to sub wavelength, you can also get far more control on the uh, on the properties of the materials and how you can actually design uh, the properties that you want. So, that is the field of metamaterials. So, meta is beyond or it is like artificial. So, beyond natural materials, you can actually get metamaterials. So, they can be classified in two manners. One is resonant and another is non-resonant. So, the non-resonant ones are like anisotropic and hyperbolic metamaterials. They are typically broadband in nature, but whereas you go for resonant metamaterials, resonance means there will be a sharp Q uh, resonance. So, there is a Q factor associated. So, you can make a double positive like uh, uh, you can have uh, no ordinary materials like double positive materials, but that some property which is not never found in nature that kind of metamaterial is also possible. You can have single negative like you can have either permittivity or permeability negative okay? and then you can have double negative or you can get negative refractive index material. You can have n less than uh, 1 or epsilon near 0. You can make super absorbers, nonlinear and other types of metamaterials. So, if you want to see the metamaterial uh, where it stands, okay, you can actually bring back the photonic band diagram that we have seen in a couple of lectures, you know, before. So, you can actually see that this axis, the y axis is basically the normalized frequency, right. It has also got a element called A and this A is basically the size, okay of or the lattice constant you can say or it is basically the size factor right so if you see that when it is very small 
okay almost atomic scale that is where ordinary materials and mixtures come into picture so you can actually see here so ordinary materials a is basically in atomic scale okay so inter atomic distance is typically uh, you know armstrong uh, which is 0.1 nanometer in that scale so when you make mix those ordinary materials together you get mixtures and those mixtures are also typically having the similar or slightly larger uh, length scale so you can actually take that you know mixtures are much much uh, smaller than lambda by 20 what is lambda lambda is basically the wavelength of the interacting light okay so these are the cases where you can see along this y axis you know you have ordinary materials and mixtures now up to this case where it's like you know um, the normalized frequency is typically half that is the case so below this you can say that the metamaterials are basically non resonant metamaterials that means the effective properties are basically derived as average of the constituent materials and above this line dashed line you can say that the new properties that emerge from the resonance and interference effects so that is where you know the resonant metamaterials come into picture now if you try to put into uh, you know try to put a lens length scale you will see that the non resonant metamaterials a is typically much much smaller than lambda by 4 okay and in resonant materials the metamaterials a is of the order of lambda by 10 and what happens in photonic crystal you already know it is of the order of lambda or lambda by 2 so this is the regime of photonic crystal this is the regime where you know the light line and the blue line they are overlapping to each other you remember if you remember from the uh, from the photonic band diagram that you have discussed before so th these are basically the region where light line and the band line are matching so what is what is basically light line light line is basically when you take a crystal and um, get approximate its uh, properties based on some average value so it means until this region okay this this particular case okay light is not able to see the lattice separately okay so this is where the photonic crystal uh, effects will come in okay before that light actually sees everything like a you know averaged out property okay so this is the case and if you look into this line for more you know finely you will actually say that see that this is basically the uh, boundary between the non resonant and the resonant metamaterials so when you go to resonant metamaterials their new properties uh, emerge from the resonance and the interference effects so keep this table in mind that will help you to understand the length scale when someone talks about uh, photonic crystal resonant metamaterials non resonant metamaterials mixtures and all these things now the question comes why do we need metamaterials now if you look into the modern material science and engineering they led to synthesis of many novel chemical compounds by combining the atoms of this natural uh, materials to obtain some desired electromagnetic property so if you take any chemical matter matter you can see there are pure substances like elements where only one kind of atom is there or you can have compounds where two or more types of atoms are there and then you can also so these are pure substances and on the other side you can have mixtures so mixtures can be like you know alloys where sol these are basically solid mixtures of um, metals there can be solution which are basically liquid mixtures of compounds and there can be blend where these are basically composites these are solid mixtures of compounds so these are different types of you know uh, mix mixture you can say um, where people have tried with different recipe to get different properties but more or less the properties are basically coming from uh, one of the constituent materials there is nothing you know that comes out completely uh, random or unique which does not belong to any of the constituent materials so nanoscale devices made up of 
these novel compounds they actually exhibit combined or modified electromagnetic response okay which cannot come from individual you know which cannot be obtained individually from the constituent material so these mixtures actually give rise to some averaged or combined or modified properties okay now the major bottleneck in this kind of material engineering is that you have a very limited set of uh, natural materials that you can use for some application so the number of uh, trials and the you know the combinations that you can try that also becomes very limited so if you remember this periodic table from your um, school days okay so only few materials you can use for you know one particular application so the combination permutation combination of different mixers are also very limited and this is where you know meta materials will come to your help because these are artificially engineered materials okay so meta materials what are, what are the definition you can say meta materials are rationally designed artificial materials that gain their properties from their structures and carefully engineered unit cells so here the unit cells behave like the artificial atom so you can call it as meta atom okay and these properties do not come from their constitutive materials so that is very important and as i mentioned before meta is a greek word that means beyond or after and materia is nothing but materials so it is actually beyond natural materials so this this diagram actually shows you the analogy between atoms and meta atoms okay atoms constitute constitute uh, natural materials similarly meta atoms okay these constitute meta materials and you have the complete control on designing each of these meta atoms depending on the required property okay so as nature uses atoms to build any materials engineers use metallic semiconductor or insulating nanostructures in the form of un meta atoms or unit cells to construct meta materials now this is the most important point meta materials gain electromagnetic properties not as much from their raw material composition as from their assembly of sub wavelength size individual elements which is meta atoms so the property of the meta material mainly depends on the structural design of the meta atom not very much on the property of the material used for that structural design the structural design material will play some role but not a major role the structure itself plays the most important role okay so meta atoms can resonantly couple to both electric and magnetic components of the incident electromagnetic radiation and you can actually tune them to exhibit some properties that are not found in naturally occurring materials okay so this is how meta materials will look like and this will be each uh, meta atom looking like look at the scale here a which is uh, the size of this meta atom which is much much smaller than the wavelength of the incident electromagnetic radiation or light so this curl show you nothing but the magnetic moment okay and this shows you the dipole moment okay electric dipole moment okay so we understood that meta atoms they are basically made of conventional materials such as uh, metal and dielectric so you started with atoms from that you got some materials and that materials can be used to construct some meta atoms where the structural design plays the most important role okay and then when you put this meta atom and you know create a meta material which is either a 2d or a 3d array of this meta atoms then a completely new property come out which is not belonging to this atom or this kind of materials okay so important factor is that these are sub wavelength in size okay 
and they are much smaller than the conventional optical elements such as lenses, prism and all. Okay? So, the precise shape, geometry, size, orientation and arrangement of these uh, matter atoms or nanostructures can affect the electromagnetic waves okay, of light and they can produce some unusual and exotic electromagnetic uh, response which was never seen before. So, this is one example of uh, metamaterials. Now, I believe now it answers the question that why we need metamaterials. Now, you can understand that you can change the design of this meta atom and can create any property. So, that almost gives you infinite number of possibilities of designing meta atoms. So, you can actually create any number of uh, meta materials. So, this is one particular example of uh, a meta material that has been made and fabricated. Okay? So, you can see the time length scale here. So, this is for a microwave uh, frequency. Okay. So, this is basically as you can see there is a rod and there is a square type of um, split ring resonator. This is again the same thing uh, with a um, circular split ring resonator. We will come to this why these things are needed. Now, one good thing about metamaterial is that if you understand the concept of metamaterial for microwave domain, you can simply scale it to nano scale okay, and they will still work. Okay, because uh, you know you, the electromagnetic properties are basically derived from the structure. Okay, just that you have to choose the correct um, dispersion function for the materials that you are using. Okay, so every material that you are using will have uh, its uh, refractive index or permittivity as a function of lambda. So, if you pick that correctly, the same design can give you response in microwave as well as optical frequency regime. Now, when you study uh, metamaterials, this is a very important diagram, it is called uh, epsilon mu diagram. So, you have got uh, on the horizontal axis, you have got epsilon on the vertical axis, you have got uh, mu permeability. Okay. So, this is the first quadrant where you have both positive. Okay. So, this is also called DPS, we will see that in the next lecture, uh, sorry, next slide. So, here these are basically the common dielectric, um, transparent dielectrics that we deal with. Okay. So, if this is E, this is H, this is K. Okay. E cross H, the thumb gives you uh, the direction of wave propagation and S shows you the pointing vector. So, it means energy also flows in the same direction of your wave propagation. Moving on to the second quadrant, here epsilon is negative, but mu is positive and that is the case of electrical plasma. Okay? Or you can say that is what happens with metals at optical frequencies. Okay? So, here um, you will see that these are basically propagation does not happen or is not supported. There is basically evanescent wave. Okay? So, you can only have evanescent wave in metal. So, metal does not support propagation of light. Right? So, next is the third quadrant. So, in this quadrant, uh, both epsilon and negative, uh, epsilon and mu are negative. So, this is also called uh, negative index material because in this case, the refractive index of the material becomes negative. So, in such case, okay, it becomes a left handed system. So, E cross H, you will see it follows a left hand rule. So, the K, the wave propagation happens in backward direction, okay, whereas the pointing vector goes in the forward direction. Okay. So, you will be facing front, but you will be moving back, something like that you can think of. Okay? So, that is bit unusual that that is not happening in the nature. So, ideally um, when when people thought of metamaterials, they always thought of negative index materials, but now the community has you know loosened the definition of metamaterials. So, now any kind of materials that can give you some exotic uh, properties which are not found in nature are also broadly classified as metamaterials. The fourth quadrant is basically where epsilon is positive, but mu is 
negative. So, that is the case of magnetic plasma. So, that does not occur naturally uh, at optical wavelengths. However, if that used to occur, then in that case also you know you will have evanescent waves. So, to keep things uh, simple, you can see here. So, when we talk about ENG that is epsilon negative, that is the case of this one. Okay, so, your epsilon is negative, mu is positive. So, if you have uh, light falling this way, okay, you will get reflected light this way, but there is only evanescent propagation. Okay, this is the plasma material. So, there is only evanescent propagation. So, artificial metal or electric plasma, they support uh, this one. Then you can go to DPS that is the double positive. So, double positive is basically all transparent uh, dielectrics or you can say all ordinary right handed media. So, this is what we have seen from our you know childhood. So, there is there is nothing new here. So, light comes, it gets refracted and so on. Okay? Now, negative permeability is this one. So, these two cases are typically same. Only thing is that here it has to be some magnetic material. Okay, or ferrites. Okay, so magnetic plasma or magnetic conductor can behave like this. Although there is no um, optical material that that can give you this kind of feature at the optical frequencies. Okay, and then you come to this one that gives you backward propagation, as I mentioned. So here you can see when you have uh, incident wave, they are kind of reflected back. Okay. And this is the case of uh, negative refracted uh, waves. So instead of going that side, it remains here. Okay, fine. So this is the case of uh, metamaterials classification in four different axes. Okay. So now let us look into um, how do we create negative permittivity metamaterials. So it means we are now trying to create some artificial uh, metal right so first system that we'll be talking about is uh, the case of uh, metallic nanospheres in dielectric medium something like this you take a metallic nanospheres of any known metal okay say gold or silver and then you put it um, in a dielectric medium so, you have got a dielectric medium of permittivity epsilon which is uniformly filled by small nanospheres of complex permittivity epsilon s. Okay? So, and um, if you consider an isotropic medium is formed, it means in this medium any direction you look it is more or less uniformly mixed. So, it is a uh, isotropic medium then you will get Maxwell Garnett mixing rule defining the effective permittivity. We will look into this rule in more details in the next lecture, but here I can simply tell you the formula that you will get effective permittivity which depends on the permittivity of the host medium, this will be the host medium and the nanosphere uh, whatever, is, whatever is the material, the permittivity of the nanosphere material and the filling fraction of the nanosphere. So, filling fraction is nothing but the fraction or the ratio of the volume occupied by these uh, nanospheres over the total volume. So, this is also called as filling ratio. Now, what happens with that? Now, let us assume that this is of a simple drood model, right? Uh, material, drood material. So, you can give the permittivity epsilon as, as epsilon naught 1 minus omega p square over omega square. So, what is omega p? That is the plasma frequency of that metal. right? Now, with that when you put it into the equation hmm, of epsilon e, you will get it is like epsilon l okay? 1 minus omega square over omega 1 square 1 minus omega square over omega naught square. So, what is omega naught? That is given by this omega p over square root of 1 plus epsilon r naught omega 1 is basically omega p over square root of 1 plus epsilon r 1. What is epsilon l? That is this one 1 plus 2 f over 1 minus f epsilon. Epsilon r naught is 2 plus f over 1 minus f epsilon r and epsilon r 1 is 2 times 1 minus f over 1 plus 2 f epsilon r. What is this? This is basically a form which looks compact 
and these are the new variables which has come up okay there are some significance associated with that i'll come to that okay so here you remember that epsilon r is basically the relative permittivity of the host medium so we assume that epsilon was the permittivity so when you do epsilon over epsilon naught that is epsilon r that is the host medium's relative permittivity and we assumed it to be a frequency dependent one frequency independent one okay so it is same for all the wavelengths or all the frequencies now if you take this particular uh, equation again you will see that the effective permittivity has a pole at omega naught and it has got a zero at omega one okay so with that if you try to plot it okay so you will see that it has got a pole at omega naught okay and it has got a zero at omega one fine and since from this equation you can see that epsilon r o is basically greater than epsilon r okay it means the resonance frequency omega naught okay falls below that of the isolated nanosphere what is the um, resonant frequency of the isolated nanosphere you can take it as omega naught okay and you will see that the effective medium that you have created has a resonance frequency okay uh, which is below that of the isolated nanosphere okay so another application another thing is epsilon r1 if you look into this one epsilon r1 is basically smaller than epsilon r okay and if you compare it is also smaller than epsilon r o from that you can find out uh, and we can also see that omega 1 omega 1 is greater than omega naught so you can see from here okay if this is uh, larger than this one so this will be larger than this one right so in that case epsilon e is negative okay so you can find from here that this is the condition where epsilon e is negative and that will uh, remain negative within this particular band where epsilon naught and epsilon one is the frequency band so if you look into this highlighted region this is where this permittivity is negative and this is well below the plasma frequency of the metal so whatever was the metal that you uh, started with because let's assume that gold or silver so omega p will denote the plasma frequency of that particular metal which is which is actually making uh, the nanosphere but when you put it in the dielectric medium uniformly the effective uh, permittivity will have a plasma frequency lower than this one so you are able to design uh, a artificial metal so what will be the exact plasma frequency that will uh, that is here which is omega 1 so that is the case where you know it will cross from negative to positive so you can actually decide what is omega 1 depending on you know the materials that you are using fine so that is how you are able to design artificial metal now if you consider that mu is positive so the permeability is positive then this particular material can be taken as a single negative metal material or you can say this is a kind of a artificial homogeneous metal which is having you know its plasma frequency below that uh, constituent materials permit plasma frequency now there is another case where you can get you know a different way of calculating um, artificial plasma frequency that will be a system of thin metallic rods isotropically distributed in a dielectric medium so th this is this particular structure so here you see we are considering thin metallic rods of length a and radius uh, w okay and they are oriented in three dimensional uh, direction with a cubic uh, lattice of dimension a so from here to the mid it is a and that is how it is repeated in all three dimension and that creates an isotropic metamaterial 
Now, in this case what happens? The inductance L of a cylindrical metallic rod which has got a length of A and radius of W and we consider that A is much much larger than W. So, you can approximate uh, the inductance using this formula. Okay? And um, when there is electric field along this rod, so that will develop a charge difference or you can say you know the voltage difference between uh, its two ends. So, V can be taken as A E. What is A? A is basically the length of this uh, rod and you will also then get a current. So, current I can be written as V over the you know impedance V times uh, yeah it is divided by the impedance of this rod which is j omega L okay? and that is how you can find out. Okay? So, this also helps you to find out what is the charge associated. So, charge can be taken as um, I over j omega. Okay? So, that gives you the charge and the electric dipole moment can be considered as P curly P which is Q A. Q is the amount of charge and A is the separation between the charges. Now, if you consider the number of rods per unit volume to be capital N, okay. so per unit volume that is 1 over A cube. Okay. So, A cube is the volume. So, if you consider only one rod being there in a uh, unit volume of uh, a unit cell of length A, okay, then the polarization density capital P can be written as n times curly P. So, it is basically curly P over A cube. Okay. So, from that you can find out what is the effective susceptibility of this medium. So, you can write chi E equals capital P over epsilon naught E. So, and once you know this electric susceptibility, you can always find out what is the effective permittivity that is epsilon E, which is nothing but epsilon naught 1 plus chi E. Okay? So, by combining these equations, you can actually find you know the effective permittivity to have a form which is very much identical to the simple root metal. So, you can find epsilon E equals epsilon naught 1 minus omega P square over omega square. So, that is a very very you know well known form of any root metal. So, that makes this system easier to understand than the previous one, but it is definitely much more uh, complicated to realize. But here oh, what is omega p that is a plasma frequency in natural metal that is already decided by the electron concentration, the charge of electron, the mass of electron and all these things and you do not have any control. Whereas, here epsilon p is basically 1 over square root of epsilon sorry omega p equals 1 over square root of epsilon naught a l. What is a? a is the length, l is the inductance. Okay? So, you have control of all the physical parameters and that is how you are creating a artificial metal using this kind of structure. So, you are basically using a uh, metallic rod, but the property of the metal here does not play a significant role. What plays a significant role is the A and W that is the physical um, structure of this meta atom. And that is why this field of metamaterials gives you infinite possibility. Right? So, the dielectric medium has the permittivity of free space here. So, you are just assuming that you know this uh, rods are nicely oriented, but in free space. So, when you consider mu to be positive, this is again a single negative metamaterial or it is a negative permittivity metamaterial. Now, there are some ifs and buts that uh, though the rod here has been assumed to be a perfect conductor in the calculations as you can see, okay, but there will be usually loss associated in this uh, rods and you can accommodate that loss by adding a resistance R to the impedance where you have calculated J omega L you can add R that is basically the loss factor. Now, 
if you change one material to another material for making this particular rods there will be a change in the r okay what about l so let's see if l has got any uh, physical parameter not really so mainly it will not depend on the kind of uh, material that you are using okay fine so with that let us move on to the next part let, that is like can we realize negative permeability matter materials now so that can be done using split ring metallic elements in a dielectric medium so it is like this so you have a ring okay and then it is cut so this is called a split ring so when a metallic split ring is excited by a magnetic uh, field okay it exhibits a magnetic dipole moment m okay so this is the magnetic field h that is exciting this so this will in induce the current in this loop and this circular current will give you a magnetic dipole moment small m and then what you have to do you have to actually you know just like the way you have done in the previous case you have to make an isotropic matter material okay by uh, configuring this split ring in three dimensions at the vertices of a cubic lattice so you have to place them at the vertices of a cubic lattice and once you do that you can actually form a isotropic matter material that gives you negative permeability so let's see how it works so a metallic split ring can be modeled as an inductor l and it has to have a this gap will behave like a capacitor so there has to be a capacitor c okay and that will give you a resonant lc circuit which has got a resonant frequency of omega naught so when the size of the split ring is in nanometer and the gap is also in nanometer you can calculate and see that the resonant frequency omega naught which is calculated as 1 over square root of lc will fall in the visible region of the spectrum so effective magnetic permeability mu e then can be established for a meta material consisting of a collection of such split rings okay so you make a collection in by placing them in this fashion you will get that okay that rings need to be organized uniformly and in three dimensions at the vertices of a periodic lattice by calculating the magnetic dipole moment m induced by the magnetic field capital h along an axis normal to the plane of the ring so this is what i've discussed initially so once you do that you can find out what is the voltage induced in the loop that is equal to the rate of change of the magnetic flux and you can write them as v equals minus g omega mu naught a h what is a a is basically the area of the ring okay h is the magnetic field mu naught is the vacuum permeability okay uh, j is the j omega so omega is the frequency of the incident uh, wave okay and uh, from that voltage you can also find out what is the current so i equals v by z so z is basically the circuit impedance so here you know that there is the inductor and the capacitor in series so you can find out z as uh, j omega capital l plus 1 over j omega c okay and this particular current in turn results in a magnetic dipole moment which is given as m equals a times i okay and this small m is basically the magnetic moment dipole moment for one ring and when you have a density of capital n split rings per unit volume okay you can think of the magnetization density capital m to be capital n times small m so you can write down the effective permeability to be uh, mu e equals mu naught h plus m divided by h so this is the new term that you, you have brought in by doing this kind of assembly and you will see that you know there is a bit of maths involved but it can be seen that you are able to obtain 
mu e equals mu naught 1 minus omega square over omega 1 square over 1 minus omega square over omega naught square. What is omega naught? That is 1 over square root of LC. And what is omega 1? That is given as omega naught square root of 1 minus mu naught n a square by L. So, here you see this is basically the term that defines this particular ring. Okay? So, it tells you that you know based on the design of the ring you are able to change what is omega 1. Okay? So, omega 1 has got L that is the inductance of the ring that is given as mu naught b ln of 8b by a minus 7 by 4. What is b and a? Small b and small a. They are basically the wear uh, ring and the wear radius. So, that is the ring okay? and um, b is the ring and wear radius. So, you can actually um, see these two uh, parameters here and the capacitance of this gap will be given as epsilon naught a prime over g. Okay, what is a prime? A prime is basically the cross sectional area, this cut cut square area that you see here, and g is basically the gap. Okay, so that tells you what is c. You knew what is l. You can put it here, and also you know because you have designed this, so you can find out what is epsilon. Sorry, omega one. So it will give you a very similar kind of response that you have seen in the first case. So, okay. So mu we exhibits uh, a resonance at omega naught because it has got a uh, pole at omega naught and it has got a zero at omega one okay so and it will be negative in the intervening region so this is the region where it behaves like a metal so again i told you that omega one in this case is programmable you can change not programmable you should say tunable because you are you are having the complete control on setting this value depending on uh, the size and the uh, and the you know gap and all these things all the all the parameters of the ring okay and if you consider the material to have a positive uh, electric permittivity this structure can then give you a negative uh, single negative metamaterial so in this case it is a negative permeability metamaterial so, as you see this particular graph, the frequency dependence of mu e is same as that of the effective permittivity epsilon e which you have seen for the metallic nanospheres. Okay? So, they actually have very similar kind of dependence. Okay? And for reference, these are the values which are shown here. Okay? Uh, this is the value of omega 1, this is omega naught. Okay? So, omega naught is also LNC that is also tunable. So, you get co complete control on this particular graph, right? So, you can have the con control on the resonance frequency as well as the range till which it will behave like a negative permeability metamaterial. Okay. Now, let us move on to the next case where you have negative index metamaterial. Now, as I told you, negative index will have negative effective you know, permittivity okay of the metallic rod matter material you can take that and you can add a negative uh, permeability of the metallic split ring resonator kind of matter material that you have seen and when you combine these two structures together you will be able to get a double negative dng matter material okay and dng matter materials are also called uh, negative index matter materials or nim okay so the implementation is achieved by repeating uh, the combined rod and double split ring in two dimension okay and the design was uh, experimentally demonstrated in uh, microwave region first and then its dimensions were subsequently scaled down for operation at optical frequency and this is the structure so in this structure you can see that you are actually making this kind of array okay so it's a 2d array and then you have some vertical columns so that makes it 3d Okay, and um, this is the combined structure. You have a rod and you have a double split ring resonator. Double split ring resonator gives you more parameters to control over a single split ring because you have two gaps here and there will be 
coupling between the inductors, coupling between the cap, cap the rings that will give you some capacitance effect. So you have much more design parameters to play with when you go for uh, double split ring resonator. Because here the challenge is that you have to get negative permittivity and negative permeability. Both should be negative over the same um, frequency range. And that might not be uh, possible with just you know one split ring you may not be able to completely overlap them. So you can actually take the help of this uh, double split ring um, resonator that has got more tuning parameters which allow you to get a overlap of this uh, negative permittivity window with negative permeability window okay now yeah so there are some alternative designs as well for achieving um, negative index metamaterials so this is the second case that we'll be discussing so alternative designs are something like you know for optical uh, negative index metamaterials they are easier to uh, fabricate if you follow this kind of uh, design so as you can see this is called a fishnet metal dielectric multilayer structure okay so it looks like a fishnet so there is a metal dielectric metal layer and uh, in this configuration the optical wave falls like this that is basically normally incident on the fishnet structure and uh, the electric and the magnetic fields uh, the electric and the magnetic fields are basically aligned with the metal strips okay so they actually give you this particular uh, negative permittivity and negative permeability effects so let us look into more details of this structure so as you can see here so the this is the uh, k vector so you have strips which are aligned along the h that is the magnetic field there are strips which are aligned along electric field and then you combine this together now you can understand that which strips are responsible for uh, the electric fields and or the permittivity and which strips are responsible for uh, perme permeability right or you can say electric response or magnetic response right so the strips which are aligned with the magnetic field they support anti-symmetric kind of resonant modes between the pairs of the couple strips and this gives you to uh, negative permeability above the uh, resonance frequency so we'll not go into too much of details into the mathematical foundation of this because this will be mostly done based on simulation numerical simulations on cst or fdtd or console okay but i just want to tell you here is that in this kind of structure you have the inductance on one side of metallic layer you have another inductance here okay and then you have capacitances uh, between these two layers okay and these are the factors that give you this negative uh, refractive index okay so fishnet nanostructures they serve as anions that can operate in the visible region so these are good optical um, metamaterials okay so with that we'll stop here and in the next lecture we'll discuss the effective medium theories okay so if you've got any queries on this particular lecture you can drop an email to me at this particular email address. Thank you.